They are playing an incredible game. Now, I know they sound like idiots on the TV, and I don't know who they are, I'm just saying they in general, whoever's pulling the strings, but they are running a very strategic game. You got my word. go quick uh, these are quick sessions uh, the uh, the question right is what would you share to your posterity in 11 minutes um, the first thing I would share is follow Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior Easter week clap it up for Jesus love Jesus amen um, but secondly I want to say something uh, kind of different from the other speakers um, this is something I uh, now my name is Bridger Payne I run a 25 million dollar hedge fund currently something my dad and brother both taught me we put this together and and I want to share some interesting stuff about how to make sense of the world we have some strange things going on in the world. We have $36 trillion in national debt. We have, um, why was the Keystone Pipeline shut off from President Biden? What's going on with China right now? Why, why are certain wars taking place? Why did the Nord Stream Pipeline break up? We had $13 trillion at zero or negative interest rates in 2019. How do you make sense of stuff like this? So I wanna talk about for the next nine minutes. Is that cool? Yeah, if you're with me, say yes. yes. Okay, so this comes from, um, and I'll give total ode to my dad. My dad's co-founder of a $48 billion family of funds. My brother is an investment funds attorney, so we all run different investment funds. So I'm going to go fast and go quick. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, so let's dive in. So how do you make sense of these? I'm going to tell you a little couple of things first off. Uh, in 2021, J.P. Morgan Chase was fined just under a billion dollars for manipulating the precious metals markets. Gold, silver, all out of precious metals for over a decade. Pretty interesting. You guys know that? One of the largest fines in US history. In 2012, Barclays was fined $200 million for manipulating the price of LIBOR, the London International Banking Rate, for about five years. That's a banking rate that affects millions of people's lives around the world. Interesting. Um, and you see these players in the space right now, and I get to work with some of them. And years later, you find out that markets were manipulated or changed. But in 2017, Gold was on like a flat decade. Gold kept going down. Why was gold going down? And you looked at it you're like, huh. And if you said, oh, they're market manipulators, you'd be told you're a conspiracy theorist, whatever. But then in 2021, you were proven true. Okay? So I want to dive into a little bit of how to make sense of a few things. Now, something my, my dad has, has drilled in my brain to my, me as his posterity is everything comes back to the US dollar. That'll help you make sense of the world. So you guys ready to dive into a little bit of something? Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to take you back to 1946, Brentwoods. This is the end of World War II. All the nations come together in Brentwoods, Connecticut. They decide on a new world order. And the United States comes to them and says, we're the only country really left with a military and a navy. And what we're going to do is this. Instead of the United States really could have said, we're going to conquer you. We want to rule you. We're going to get taxes from you. The United States says, we, all we want you to do is just trade with us. You guys run your own country. Just trade with us. Oh, and by the way, we will pay for a navy. A navy is one of the most expensive things you can have in the world. We'll pay for a navy to protect your shipping lanes as long as you trade with us. And the country said, where do we sign up? This sounds amazing. And they said, oh, just one other thing. You have to use our currency, US dollars. Does that sound good? And everyone said, yeah, let's sign up. So they signed up for the, the new world order. The American empire was born. And since then, every international large trade of oil or, or anything has to go through US dollars. It's called the petrodollar. Any of you guys heard of this before? Now, there's three people in history that I know of that have violated this agreement. Uh, first one is Umar Qaddafi from Libya. He traded large amounts of oil not using US dollars. And lo and behold, a couple years later, he kind of got killed by the US government. Uh, the next one, Saddam Hussein. He traded large amounts of oil not using US dollars. And he was also kind of killed by the US government. <laughs> and just interesting enough, the third one, Vladimir Putin traded large amounts of oil not using US dollars. And last year, someone with a submarine went down with Navy SEALs and blew up the Nord Stream pipeline in two different places. We don't know who did it, who, who could have done that. We have no idea, but that's what happened, okay? There, when you tie things back to the US dollar, things start to make sense in the world. So for example, uh, remember when President Biden got into office and they shut off the Keystone pipeline? You guys remember this? Remember everyone was like, why? Gas prices are going to go up. This is taking us off energy independence. You guys remember this? Like, what a stupid move. And all of, a lot of us sit in our armchair, and we go, these guys on the TV are idiots. Anybody said that before? Jerome Powell, all my, my real estate people, they keep doing rates. Like, what's going on? How do we make sense of this? Now, the analogy I like to give 
is this. Is, and now, again, I like to run probabilities, not predictions. I'm not going to try to give you a prediction. I'm just running probabilities. What's the likelihood of something happening or not happening? Does that make sense? So I like to give this example of the, the dumb waiter analogy, meaning let's say all of us work at a restaurant. And Bridger, me, I'm bad at math. You guys all know this. Bridger's just bad at math. I always mess up the change with the people that are there. You know, like the customers. So sometimes it's in favor of them, sometimes it's in favor of me, but I always mess up the change. Now, statistically, it should be about 50-50, right? 50% of the time it's in favor of the customer, 50% of the time in favor of me. But we all get together and do an audit. And you audit my last 100 transactions. And 96% of them are in favor of me. 4% in favor of the customer. Huh. Who's the idiot? Is Bridger the idiot, or are you the idiot for believing that I was the idiot? I think the similar thing could be happening with us when we watch the TV, when we watch the White House, when we watch the Fed. I know they sound like they're idiots, but watch the game they are playing. They're playing a very, I think, interesting game. So a few things, just the last few years. Keystone Pipeline was shut off. Saudi Arabia, India, and China all are talking about trading oil without using US dollars. It's a big deal when you don't do that, right? We just learned earlier. And so what does the United States do? Biden shuts the Keystone Pipeline. He gets on Air Force One and flies to Saudi Arabia and meets with the Crown Prince. Now, I don't know what they said, but after that meeting, and now I, I would assume something like this would be said, hey, Mr. Saudi Arabia, we uh, are now purchasing from you. We're one of your biggest clients. Uh, how am I going to justify Congress to house 5,000 troops on your shore? Oh, and by the way, we have an aircraft carrier that's off your coast that protects your shipping lanes. If you're not going to use US dollars, how can we justify protecting you guys in your country? Now, I, maybe, I maybe he said something like that, maybe he didn't, I don't know what he said, but evidently after that meeting, the Saudi Arabia said, you know what, we're going to go back to the US dollar. By the way, speaking of aircraft carriers, the United States has 11 super carriers. They have two nuclear power plants on, on them. They can travel for about 100 years without porting. It's pretty crazy. The combined world power has about three aircraft carriers. We have 11. Okay, That's how power, a navy is a luxury for a country. It's a massive thing to have a navy, and a navy like ours. Just to put it in perspective, this is interesting. The third largest, so one aircraft carrier would be the third largest air force in the world, third most powerful, one. So when we park three aircraft carriers two years ago off of the coast of Taiwan to protect Taiwan, that's a big deal. It's a massive deal, okay? Now I'm going fast, I'm almost done here. Um, so the Keystone Pipeline. India decides, hey, we're, we might not use the dollar. Their currency does a flash crash in July of 2022. Do you guys remember this? It did a full flash crash, it was like a meme coin. It went like, boom, and then came back up. Now I don't know what happened, but somebody behind the scenes pulled a string to say, really, you wanna get off the US dollar? And then China, let's talk about China for a second. Um, now, again, I'm just going to run probabilities, not predictions. If you wanted to put the squeeze on China, what would you do? China is saying, we have a tr they have a trillion dollars of treasuries. We're going to sell our treasuries. We're going to systematically sell treasuries. That's what they said they're going to do. We're going to get off the dollar BRICS nations. We're going to go. Well, what you would want to do is you would want to jack interest rates at the fastest rate in history. But you can't just do that because people like us in this room, we'd protest that you can't raise rates. So what do they do? They print a lot of money. And they say it's transitory. It's transitory. Oh, inflation's transitory. It's transitory. Remember this? Last two years. It's transitory. And then they go, oh, crap. We got to raise rates at the fastest rate in history. Oh, shoot. We're, oh, oh, we don't know what you're doing. Rates go up like crazy. Bond values drop by 50%. If China wants to sell their bonds, they are going to take a $500 billion loss on their bonds. It puts, I know it's squeezed the United States market, but it's really squeezed China. China, they're calling it right now a Great Depression. Unemployment rate is the highest it's been in 100 years in China right now. We have the Hangxing markets at a 27-year break even in China. They're, they're literally calling it a Great Depression in China. Every public developer in China is currently in default in real estate. Every single one of them. I mean, it is like Armageddon in China right now. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. The dollar's dying, it's dead, it's going away. And maybe, maybe it is, I, and I, it's a Ponzi scheme. I agree with you, it's a Ponzi scheme. But guess what? I was born into it. And you guys were all born into it too. And I, what I'm trying, the thesis I'm po pointing out here is that the Ponzi scheme will continue on. Now, I know some of you guys are saying the dollar's declining, it's going down. Really? Right now on your phones, pull up the DXY. It actually tracks the dollar's power. The DXY, take a guess, the last three years, where the dollar's at? Has it gone up or down? Most people would say down. 
What if I told you the dollar is up 13% in the last three years? 13%. They are playing an incredible game. Now, I know they sound like idiots on the TV. And I don't know who they are. I'm just saying they in general, whoever's pulling the strings. But they are running a very strategic game on the back end. Now, my advice to my posterity, what my dad gave to me is, the three rules of real estate are what? Location, location, location. The three rules of investing, and I run a hedge fund right now, is don't fight the Fed, don't fight the Fed, don't fight the Fed. The Fed will win. <laughs> Go with the Fed and do what the Fed is doing. And, uh, and if you can tie things back to the US dollar, things generally make sense. My name is Richard Pennington. Thank you guys very much. We'll be upstairs. I'll talk some more. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you.